Hi, John here. In this video, we're going to be looking at solar trackers. We're going to look at the horizontal type, the vertical type, and the dual axis type. We're also going to discuss manual, active, and passive type solar trackers. Then finally, we'll look at how a dual axis solar tracker works, and then we'll look at some of the advantages and disadvantages with this type of tracker. So the first thing that we should discuss is why we would have a solar tracker in the first place. Well, if you watch the video that we're looking at now, you can see that the sun rises behind the church and it moves off towards the right side and the upper side of the screen. So in order to be able to track the sun, we need to be able to follow it, not only as it moves from east to west, but also as it gradually increases in height, that is, as the sun increases to its highest point of travel in the sky. In order to track it, not only from east to west, but north to south, we need to have a dual axis solar tracker. Although, as you'll learn later in the video, the dual axis type solar tracker is not often employed on a large scale, and there are good reasons for this. So let's now have a look at how we could categorize our solar tracker. Well, the first means of categorizing a solar tracker are by its means of actuation. Solar trackers can be either manually, passively, or actively controlled. The manual method relies upon personnel going around and gradually adjusting the solar tracker throughout the day in order that it can follow the path of the sun as it rises and falls and travels from east to west. This is obviously not ideal if manual labor is quite costly and the amount you're paying the personnel per hour is quite high. So this type of tracker is only ever used in developing countries where the hourly rate you pay the personnel is quite low. In a developed country, it simply would not be economically viable to use a manually actuated type of solar tracker. The passive type of solar tracker uses a liquid with a low boiling point, which when exposed to the sun's rays will evaporate and cause an imbalance, which causes the solar tracker to lean towards the direction of the sun's rays. Passive solar trackers have the advantage that they require very few moving parts compared to active solar trackers. Active solar trackers rely upon actuators such as electric motors or hydraulic cylinders in order to change the position of the solar tracker. The most common actuators for active solar trackers are electric motors and hydraulic cylinders or hydraulic rams. The second means of categorizing the solar tracker is by its axis of rotation. A horizontal solar tracker will track the sun as it rises and falls in the sky. So it will move on a north to south axis of rotation. So essentially a horizontal tracker has one degree of freedom and it will rotate on the north to south axis. Horizontal trackers are used in locations where we have a relatively low latitude and horizontal solar trackers are the most widely used for commercial applications. You can see an example of a horizontal solar tracker field on this solar power plant. The vertical solar tracker also has one degree of freedom and it will move on an axis of rotation from east to west. Vertical solar trackers are better suited to higher latitudes. When we're talking about higher and lower latitudes, we're referring to the latitudes from the equator up until the North Pole or the equator down towards the South Pole. A lower latitude would be from the equator, approximately here, up until the southern tip of Florida, approximately here. A medium latitude would be somewhere between the lower tip of Florida up until the border of Canada. And a higher latitude would be from the lower part of Canada all the way up until the North Pole. Horizontal type solar trackers would be installed roughly from any region from the equator up until the border with Canada or perhaps down here to approximately this line here, the lower part of Brazil. 
anywhere between the low to medium latitudes. In higher latitudes, we would install the vertical type solar tracker, as this gives much better performance characteristics at higher latitudes. The final type of solar tracker is the dual axis solar tracker. And that is a solar tracker that is able to move with two degrees of freedom. So the dual axis solar tracker is able to track the sun on an east to west axis and also a north to south axis. Although a dual axis solar tracker is able to track the sun more accurately than a horizontal and vertical type solar tracker, there are some advantages and disadvantages with this type of tracker which is why it has not found widespread commercial application. And we're going to discuss the advantages and disadvantages with this type of tracker later in the video. But let's now have a look at how the dual axis solar tracker works. You can see now already that it's moving around quite a lot. Let me just pause the animation for a moment. So let's zoom in. You can see that we've got two hydraulic rams. We've got the one where my mouse is now. Just zoom out slightly. And then we've got one on the opposite side. That is this one here. And these two rams control the movement of the solar tracker. One of them is responsible for the north to south axis, and one of them is responsible for the east to west axis. So let's just push play a moment to see if we can see them operating. So we can see now the solar panel is perfectly flat. I call it solar tracker, it's actually a solar panel in our design. So let's see where it's going to move to first. I'll just position it slightly more like this. Okay, so we can see that one hydraulic ram, the one on this side, is now compressed, or not compressed, but the liquid has pushed the piston in this direction, sort of downwards. And this means that because the piston has been pushed downwards within the hydraulic cylinder, that the solar panel has tilted downwards as well. You can see here now that it is at an angle. So let's just back it up a moment. We can watch it doing that again. Let's imagine this is our north to south axis. So you saw there that when the piston moved downwards, the solar tracker also moved downwards with it. So we'll call that our north-south axis hydraulic cylinder. But you can also see there's a different hydraulic cylinder here. And this one is responsible for our east to west. So let's just push play. You can see again, the same thing has happened. The piston has been pushed this way. And what's happened then is the solar tracker, or the solar panel in this case, has tilted that way as well. So let's back it up slightly. We'll just watch it one more time. Here we go. And then it is being tilted. So two degrees of freedom on the north-south axis and also on the east-west axis. And that gives us a lot of movement. But let's just play the animation and we can see just how much movement we're going to get. You can see there, now we're being put back into a tilting position in this direction. Now it is flat. This is what we refer to as a stowed position. You'll go to this position when there are very high wind speeds. So you'll keep the profile of the solar tracker as low as possible in order that the wind can just pass by and there'll be very little resistance from the tracker and that reduces the likelihood of damage due to high wind speeds. So this is very relevant when there's a storm, etc. And if we push play, we can see now the hydraulic cylinders doing their thing and tilting the solar tracker. As I said, this one is actually a solar panel. We can see the solar panels mounted on the top. If we go around the back, we can see some of the control functions that allow us to control the solar panel. We've got a wind speed sensor or an anemometer. That is this item here. You can see the air would impact upon these small round cups and that would make them spin. And the speed that they spin at is proportional to the speed of the wind. So we can calculate the wind speed based on the 
revolutions per second of the anemometer. Go over here, we can see we've also got a solar sensor. That's this item here. That allows us to detect where the sun's rays are the strongest and direct the solar panel towards it in order that we can harvest as much energy as possible from the sun. Nowadays, solar trackers can be controlled by GPS and each solar tracker will have a wireless receiver in order that it knows which position to move to depending upon the season and the time of the day. We have a look underneath, we can see some junction boxes, these black items here. And we can also see a control box. That is this one here, the solar tracker controller, just line it up correctly. East and west axes, so that's for controlling one of our hydraulic cylinders. And the south to north axis for controlling the other hydraulic cylinder. And this would be for manual adjustment of the solar tracker. As you can see in this video, the time has been indicated and you can see the dual axis solar tracker tracking the sun as it moves across the sky. So that is how our solar tracker works. So let's now talk about the advantages and disadvantages with this type of solar tracker. The biggest advantage with a dual axis solar panel, such as the one we saw previously, is that we can generate up to 40% more electricity compared to a non-moving solar panel, in other words, a static one. However, the dual axis type solar panel costs considerably more, perhaps 100% more than a static type panel. If you consider that a dual axis solar panel can only generate approximately 40% more electricity than a standard solar panel, then it doesn't make economical sense to install dual axis solar panels. The reason being that we only generate 40% more electricity, but the panel itself can cost 100% more than a standard non-moving solar panel. This is one of the reasons why you won't see dual axis solar panels employed on a large commercial scale. In the past, this wasn't the case because solar panels were quite expensive, so it made sense to install the actuators to direct them towards the sun. Nowadays, solar panels have become much cheaper, so it's less economically viable to install the actuators. It's more economically viable just to install more panels. If you like this video, please do like it or share it on social media. You can even subscribe to the channel. And if you'd like to see more engineering related videos, check out the links available in the video description area and there you'll find discount price links to all of the available video courses. Thanks very much for your time.